Coming up on this edition of the FRC Open Alliance Show, 6328 Mechanical Vantage is back, and holy cow, their progress has been absolutely outstanding. We got tons of live demos that we'll be showcasing. You gotta see how their uh, funnel's working, and for intake and the coral, they've added some belts onto that. Their elevator is wicked fast, and we're gonna see that demonstrated as well, too, on screen, so make sure you look out for that. We'll be diving more into their super low clearance they're doing with it, uh, showcasing more on their debt bot, how it's gonna translate into their comp bot, taking a look at their climb as well too and how that's going to be all packaged in and getting a great update on their software and how everything's coming together with that including a very interesting choice of computer on their robot as well too so let's see what their progress is up here on the frc open alliance show this video on fun is brought to you by our viewers supporters members and also in partnership with the following Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at Kettering.edu slash first. So welcome back on one of my favorite teams that we have on here on the open line, 6328 Mechanical Advantage. Hopefully you've been following their incredible build log. It looks like the entire community has because there's so much going on with what this team has to offer. Uh, so welcome back, everybody. If you don't mind, I know we got a couple new faces. Let's introduce everybody. Let us know what you do on the team. We're going to be hopping right into your overview and what you've been working on. Hi everyone, my name is Lesia. I'm our vice captain. My name is Emily and I'm part of the CAD and manufacturing team. I'm sorry, I'm part of the, or I'm the software lead on this team. I'm Matthew, I'm the CAD lead. And I'm Advith and I'm the strategy lead. So today we're going to be going over our bright pink powder coated kit bot, our dev bot and our deep climb prototype. So now diving into our dev bot. If you haven't heard already, our dev bot concept it's super exciting and we're all really happy about it. And basically what we can do is build a slightly lower fidelity robot than our competition robot, but it's still super capable and we can get started playing the game earlier in the season while learning a lot. So we have all the same subsystems we're gonna have on our competition robot minus the deep climb, uh, but just a little bit lower fidelity. Obviously you can see not quite legal for the playing field, um, but it teaches us a lot about what we can do to make minor improvements on our competition robot design and we can build it faster and our driver is a little bit more familiar and everything. So we'll dive right into all the subsystems. So here we'll start with the algae intake over here. Uh, so this obviously deploys up and down to pick up our algae. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pivoting about two, uh, two dead axles and two individual dead axles. And something really cool about this subsystem is almost every part is custom made from the sprockets to the mounting plates and everything. Uh, so it's just a pretty interesting subsystem. Uh, and we have here, we have what we like to call the horse plate with our deployment gearbox. Uh, I'll hand it off to Matthew to talk more about, or I'll hand it off to Emily to talk about the hopper. <laughs> All right, so I'm super excited to talk about our hopper funnel intake. You know, it's, um, it has like this open top kind of hopper funnel shape. And what I think is really interesting about our intake mechanism is how much it's evolved in the last few weeks, right? So we started with some inspiration from Big Sky Robotics and their forward intake on day one. And we so we kind of had that claw plate with the entrapment stars and the following versions, they kind of built off of that. We just moved the shafts around. We we replaced the entrapment stars with belts. We put some compliant wheels on there. Um, but with this year's game and the weight restriction, we tried to look at more passive approaches. So we started using polycarb and bending it instead of, instead of using those motorized shafts. But our, our intake mechanism took a really big pivot when our strategy team decided that it would be worthwhile to implement an intake that can, that can grab the coral from three different sides of the robot, right? So at that point, we only had an intake that could um, receive the coral from the front, but with this kind of open hopper design, we could take it in from three sides. So we just kind of flipped our intake on its side, widened it up a little bit, and now 
um, this is what our intake looks like. And you can kind of see we kind of kept the most effective parts that we saw throughout, throughout the way. So we still have our belts on there and we still have some, some curved polycarb and that's, that's what our funnel looks like now. Something I want to ask you on this, I know this was uh, something I got asked in your Chief Delphi build log too, but can you explain the why you went with belts as well, not just completely gravity fed on there? Right. So with the belts, um, with just gravity on the intake, our coral had some trouble. Like if we were to intake it like this, it would just fall like that, right? But if these motors are spinning, the belts kind of lead the coral in, right into the end effector really nicely. So I'll pass it off to Matthew to talk about. Thanks, I'm super hyped to talk about this amazing elevator here. So Siri is gonna run it up and down for us. Maybe, or not. So we geared this elevator pretty aggressively to be able to reach L4 in under half a second. So on, on the elevator here, we have our, uh, our static uh, end effector. So on comp, they'll be pivoting to allow us to pick up algae off the reef. But just for DevBot, we took our, our prototype and we just put it on passively. So this is a three-stage continuous elevator with two-inch spool on the back, geared four to one. So we gear this pretty aggressively to be able to reach all four levels of the reef. So yeah, pretty sick. So now Siri can talk about the software. What? Oh, deep plan? All right, so let's talk a little bit about our deep climb prototype. So um, this is kind of the second type of climb we're trying. This is inspired by 118's EveryBot design. So the way this works is we drive up to the cage and this hook slides into the cage. The cage is pretty heavy, so it slides on pretty easily with the weight of the cage. And then this then carries the cage right into the robot to help lift it off the ground. And we've gone through a lot of iterations of this deep climb design. A lot of what we focused on is making this prototype as compact and as packaged as possible, because as you can see in our dev bot, we don't have a lot of space left. So what we've been focusing on is finding ways to stow the arm. So instead of having just one tube holding up our pivot, we have two tubes so the arm during a match can stow between. So on our dev bot, this will go right under the hopper. And when we have to climb, this will go up and then pull the cage into itself. We also changed it so it's chain driven, um, also a lot of, a lot because of packaging reasons. And yeah, we're still continuing to work on it. Right now we're working on packaging it even more and then adding a more higher fidelity gearbox to the climber. So in order to package that uh, into like kind of where your dev is right now, is your hopper gonna have to articulate then as well too? Or how does that work when you wanna deploy that climber essentially? Yeah, so we'll have, I mean, our competition robot is going to look a little bit different, obviously, but we are going to just package it a little bit more. So we are going to share this shaft of our hopper, most likely, with our climber. So we'll kind of stow underneath, and then it would go up at the end of the match. All right. Now Sarah's going to talk about software. Yeah. Um, so software's been up to a lot in the past three weeks of build season. Um, so I guess in the past week, we pretty much finished up and posted our what is close to be our final our final visual vision solution for 2025. Um, most notably being that we've changed from using, um, or we're now using the Boslers this year, which are a bit more, uh, which are faster than our older cameras. So they run at about 100 FPS monochrome, and we have color versions of these which run about 50 FPS. Also, as, as well as that. Um, <laughs> We switched up with a coprocessor we're using this year. So we got the Apple Mac Mini um, M4 on our robot now, on a logo. Yeah. So like literally that whole thing's going to be on the robot? Yeah, just one of these. That's a, that's amazing, by the <laughs> way. Um, so. Yeah, and so we've done a lot of stress testing with that. I think um, when we just when we first thought about doing it, like in November-ish, we, uh, we had one Mac Mini up to uh, running six April Tag Detection pipelines, and we were able to get actually 10, and we're able to get 50 FPS on all of them. And so that's pretty much yielded for us. Or I just got to add, like, who, <laughs> whose idea was that? Or what was the inspiration behind even using that? Well, I think there's been teams in the past who have tried to use, I think some team did use the Mac Mini M2. But we, 
uh, we saw the price of the M4 come down and we were like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we did. We did see some buzz online about the the M2 Mac Mini, <laughs> and we are aware of the the price of the M4, and we realized it was within our budget and within our uh, constraints, resource wise. So we decided to make the choice like that. Uh, as well as that, with the a kind of update to the architecture on the robot or a comp bot. Software has been busy, has been uh, up in the water <laughs> <laughs> with code to write. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, Matthew, do you want to demonstrate the failure zones of the superstructure? <laughs> <laughs> Should be avoided. <laughs> These are only some of the great things to get off a of live demo. So I really, I really do appreciate uh, everything that's uh, been, been, all the attempts that have been made. We'll say uh, the, the showcase what this is. Very cool on that. Uh, anything else from software you want to dive into? Yeah. So um, one of the cool things we'll be posting up in the first in a few days is <laughs> our whole control scheme with the um, with the superstructure, especially with it being so complex this year. With um, of course having the linear mechanism and the the rotating pivot, as well as the slamming intake and the addition of having an algae stored on the end vector as well. So that was pretty fun to do, or not really, but it's fun. If you don't mind, I'd like Thank to go you. back to the elevator a little bit um, from the mechanical side of things. I mean, when we showed that thing deploy, I mean, that was a lot of energy, uh, you know, coming out right away, a lot of momentum and stuff, and that comes up right away. How are you making sure that, like, you're not being tippy when you're, you know, sending up that much weight that quickly, that sort of thing? Yeah, so that CG and managing our CG this game in this game is a big priority for us. So dev bot right here is 26 by 26, but on comp we're gonna bump that up to 28 by 28 just for the add stability. And then we counteract that with having the battery low in the back of the robot this year. And then this year we also dropped our belly pan. Uh, on dev we have one by ones, but on comp we'll use the SDS lowering blocks. So all that allows us to lower our CG. And then in terms of the actual elevator itself. A uh, big priority for us is super rigid mounting of the tubes and being super rigid within it. So making sure everything's boxed in properly and super rigid. That way you're able to send it up full force into the hard stops without having to worry about anything. And how how high off the ground is that dry tram? Yeah, it just looks super, super low. Yeah, so we have uh, 0.75 from the tube to the ground with the eighth inch belly pan. So, so we've uh, seen the uh, pink... Uh, every or the pink uh, kit bot, right? We got the gold dev bot, right? Are we going full blue on the comp bot, or what's the plan from that standpoint? Yeah, we'll stick to our usual blue and black color scheme. Love it. So, okay. Uh, anything else uh, that you want to highlight or, or cover or go through? I mean, like I said, there's so much for us to explore on this. Uh, one of the things I know we're not going to dive too deep into on this, by the way, too, is you got to check out their posts on uh, scouting and how their apps are working and that sort of thing, too. So make sure you do check that out. But anything else you want to highlight or cover? No, I don't think so. Uh, but thank you. Yeah, 6328, this looks awesome, and we can't wait to see your continued progress as well, too. I know many of you are following the Bill blog, but if you're not, go check it out on Chief Delphi, see what's happening for that, and so many great posts coming up. So thanks a lot, everybody, and best of luck the rest of the way. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.